Honourable Member for Rustico Emerald and the uh, Opposition Way. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, Prince Edward Island has made great strides in renewable energy over the last 20 years, most notably in, in wind energy. However, progress in the area of solar power has lagged behind. Question to the Minister uh, responsible for energy. What incentives currently exist to encourage the adoption of solar energy on Prince Edward Island? The Honourable Minister of uh, Transportation, Infrastructure and Energy instead of women. Mr. Speaker, as I've mentioned here several times since the House opened, the incentives that we are offering to islanders is helping them switch away oil. from oil towards oil. heat pumps, Mr. Speaker. We are offering incentives for people to to insulate their homes, to convert from uh, different sources of electricity and uh, use wood, uh, use propane, Mr. Speaker. We are continuing to work on initiatives that we can expand as we go forward. We're working with businesses so they can have, uh, convert to other sources of energy, Mr. Speaker. And we are continuing to work on, on uh, different initiatives that will provide Islanders options. The Honourable Member for Rustico Emerald. Well, uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. It was a simple question. It was about uh, incentives for solar, Mr. Speaker. I didn't hear anything about solar in that response. Mr. Speaker, a new study from the National Energy Board suggests that solar energy is an underdeveloped opportunity for Prince Edward Island to lower energy costs and carbon emissions. Prince Edward Island has some of the highest electricity costs in the country, Mr. Speaker. And as they say in the report, I quote, some, this, the reason that Prince Edward is, is ripe for solar development is it depends more on local electricity prices rather than the amount of sunlight received. Question to the Energy Minister. Are there any tax incentives or rebates in place for island homeowners and businesses who have developed or want to use solar to develop net zero buildings? The uh, Honourable Minister of Transportation, Infrastructure, Energy and Status of Women. Mr. Speaker, we do have lots of incentives and one of them in particular is benefiting Islanders by $10 million by giving a rebate on the tax towards their electricity. They get that on their bill every month, Mr. Speaker. We're continuing to invest in efficiency programs, in heat pumps, in conversion to other sources of energy. We're working with Islanders. We're working with low-income families. We will continue to work with them to save them money every day in their pockets. Got him on the ropes. Got him on the ropes. Keep flipping. You never said what you're taking to the other pond. Though. Next page. On it's in the next page. I'm sure it is. Keep flipping. There. Honorable Member, Rustico Emerald. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And, and Mr. Speaker, taking the uh, provincial portion of the PST off of electricity is a great initiative. It was something we campaigned on in the last election. Thank you for doing that. Implementing the policy. But, but Mr. Speaker, those islanders who've taken the initiative to install PV solar panels still pay tax on the energy that they produce and they use, Mr. Speaker. Anyway, Mr. Speaker, the report I'm talking about called The Economics of Solar Panel Canada said this about our province, Mr. Speaker. Currently, residential solar break-evens are less than residential electricity prices in most places in Prince Edward Island. Question to the Minister responsible for energy. Why aren't we doing more to encourage islanders to take advantage of this opportunity? The Honourable Minister of Transportation, Infrastructure, Energy and Status of Women. Mr. Speaker, I applaud those that are doing a lot in, in solar conversion, Mr. Speaker. They are using the grid, Mr. Speaker. They still use the grid when they need it, uh, but it's great that they can go to net zero when they don't need that uh, extra opportunity. But, Mr. Speaker, there's a cost to maintaining that grid so that th when they need it, they can switch to it, Mr. Speaker. But, Mr. Speaker, we are are continuing to work with Islanders to convert to heat pumps, to convert to different sources of energy, to put money back in their pockets, and to give them incentives to to uh, to green their their energy uh, consumption. Thank you, Mr. The Honourable Member for Rustico Emerald. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. So, the National Energy Board report came to a similar conclusion about commercial and community solar break-even points right here on Prince Edward Island, Mr. Speaker. They said, and I quote, this means that businesses in most places here on Prince Edward Island 
there could, there could expect to save money by installing solar. Question to the energy minister. Why is government ignore, ignoring a chance for island homeowners, businesses, and communities to save money by incentivizing more local renewable energy? The Honourable Minister of Transportation, Infrastructure, Energy and Status of Women. Mr. Speaker, as a government, we are partnering with communities who are developing solar systems. Mr. Speaker, the, down in Montague, there's a, a new system being put in place. I applaud that and the initiative they're doing. I applaud the City of Summerside. They're heating the credit union place with their solar system, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, I also want to applaud the community of Tignan for their initiative on a district heating system using biomass, Mr. Speaker. These are all initiatives that are renewable. You're talking about renewable. I'm talking about renewable. And biomass is a renewable heating